Good morning. How are you? Welcome to my session for the Ride Pro Tour. This session was created by Julian Weidenbacher from 4D Germany and is presented by me. So let's have a look at 4D Ride Pro. You know that since 4D Ride Pro was launched, we have been continuously developing more features for 4D Ride Pro. It's a product that is in constant evolution. And in here, in this session, I'm going to show you many features that we have in 4D Ride Pro that we don't have in 4D Ride. Let's begin with bookmarks. What are bookmarks? Bookmarks are references uh, to your document. So these references are created with ranges. Now, you know that in 4D Write Pro, we use ranges for everything. Anything that you need to define, you need to select a range. Uh, or if you select something manually with your mouse, uh, that is referencing a range. So in this case, bookmarks, they reference text blocks. And you may say, all right, uh, that's like the bookmarks that we have on PDF documents. But on this case, uh, they are more powerful. Let's have a look here. Here on the, uh, we are going to use templates. And these templates include some bookmarks. I'll show you here. So this is example. And we he here we have a template editor. And using the 4D uh, Write Pro interface, you have a, page, a section here for bookmarks. And here we have different bookmarks for the header, the invoice line, the file, the subtitle, subtotal, and so on. As you can see, every time I select a bookmark, it takes me to the section where I have that. But it also highlights the text. It selects the text. As I said, this is a text block. So if we talk about a text block, it's a reference to a text block, and that text block is a range. And we have in here different uh, bookmarks. And this is a database for um, invoices. The nice thing here is that we have different templates for the invoices. You see? And each of these invoices have uh, different bookmarks, like this one, this one, this other one. For the subtotal, we have an invoice for the invoice line. And I have these three different uh, templates. And I'm going to show you here. Uh, well, here I have the different ones. And here I can define bookmarks. But this is a very ingenious way of using bookmarks because I am going to use these bookmarks to define the different parts of my invoice. As you can see the main header, a uh, secondary header, an invoice line, a uh, subtotal. All right. But I want to add a new bookmark here to see what happens if I have many invoice lines, and then I want to put those invoice lines into different pages. So I want to define a secondary header that indicates me that uh, there, there, there was a jump in a page and to have a subtotal. So that one will go in here. 
I can, uh, I can delete uh, this bookmark from here. You will notice that I delete the, uh, I delete the bookmark, but I don't delete the text. It only deletes the reference. And again, I can add that bookmark here again, and then it will take me there. So let's look at the invoice samples out here. So here are some invoices created with the different bookmarks. But what is interesting here is uh, that each of these ones were different bookmarks. And I used those uh, bookmarks uh, to insert every different line. Let's see how it's done. So we have this command, uh, get bookmarks. And let's see how it adds uh, every line. So when I'm going to insert a new line, I get that bookmark, uh, bookmark range. And then, uh, with that range, well, I, I get that from the template. So here I'm doing two things. It's not that, for example, when you have uh, another way of creating invoices would be with the process for the tags. Here I have two things. I have my template on one side. My template contains the bookmarks. And then I I'm creating a new document, which is the invoice. What I'm doing with the bookmarks is that I'm extracting that bit uh, which is the invoice line from the template, I'm putting that into the new document. So with this command, web uh, wp get bookmark range, I'm extracting, uh, I'm extracting the, the bookmark for the invoice line, converting that into a range, and then from that range, I create a new uh, for the right pro document. And then after that, I insert that one. I insert that one into the new document. And that uh, is what it makes it very innovative. You know, it's a very clever way of doing it copying from one document, one part of one do into one document, and then pasting that into another document. But in the other document, we are calculating the reference. Then we have the print option. So what are the commands that we use with the bookmarks? With WP create bookmark, we create a bookmark. And also the bookmark will allow your uh, end users to navigate through a document, jump into different parts. But this was a very special example to use the bookmarks as uh, to select different ranges and from those ranges create uh, a new, the invoice lines. That's what, what is the most impressive part. With the command uh, WP get bookmarks, you can get all the bookmarks that you have in a document and uh, that will put that into an array. Then with find an array, you will find the different bookmarks. And then with WP get bookmark range, you convert that a bookmark name into a for the right pro range, which is an object as you've already seen. 
And then with WP insert document, you insert that range into another document. With for the right pro, you have the ability to create very advanced documents. You can create brochures, flyers, catalogs with just a few commands, which are very, very powerful. So this example, I'm going to show you an example of um, a database that contains artists and paintings. Uh, we are going to convert that. Uh, we are going to do a great, great brochure in a few steps. So let's open. So let's start by creating a new document. This one you've already seen it with the WP new. Now let's set the title. For this, we use this command that we've been using for years, which is st set text. But after we set the text, we define some attributes. So here it is, we've, we've inserted uh, the artist name and the name that we're going to put for the book that we are creating, the brochure. Now we can set a header and footer. For the header and footer, we use this command WP set frame. With WP set frame, we define where we want to put that frame. If we want to put that frame as a header or if we want to put that one as a footer. And then we define the text for that frame. So here it is, the header and the footer. Then we define the biography. For the biography, again, we first we create a range, and then we, ha we have to store the biography in a field called artist biography. So this biography is another for the right pro document. Again, we are taking one for the right pro document and inserting that document into another document. So it, the great thing here is that you can have many for the right pro documents spread it around your database and then put all those uh, documents in just one single document using many times this command WP insert document. So there it is, I have inserted. Now we want to insert the different paintings that we have for uh, these artist. What I've added here, I've added uh, some paintings. Uh, I've inserted everything into a table. That's why you see that we have it in two columns. But instead of adding uh, columns, I have added uh, tables. So I'm inserting here a table 
And then I add everyone, uh, depending if it is an even or if it is an odd. Uh, I define where to insert it, where to put the text, or where to put the picture that I'm, I'm alternating here. I'm adding the different, uh, the different rows here. And then with WP set attributes, I define the different uh, attributes such as the font, the border, the width of the border, and so on. So here I'm uh, putting all the main uh, paintings. And then I want to add more, more paintings, but in this case, I'm not going to insert the different pictures, but I'm just to put some references. So these are references, again, this is a table. This is a more simple example of the table, but you can see uh, I, uh, I have different attributes. Again, you can see that I'm just using very few commands, especially which are the commands that I'm most using. Uh, I'm using uh, WP set attributes that, and WP insert, command, insert document and ST set text. Those are just a few commands which are very, very powerful. Finally, I'm going to add uh, the last page here with the back portrait and small uh, description here. And now let's define the background picture, which will give a final touch to our document. So here I'm adding uh, and defining what is going to be the, uh, the background picture. So I take this from uh, the record of the artist. And again, here we have WP set attributes. And I'm using this one. Uh, I'm defining that, that picture as a background image of the main document, which is WP area. And here, I'm telling it to fill the whole page, right? Telling it, uh, passing this uh, constant uh, WK paper box that will fill the whole page. Then, notice that here I'm selecting a the other ranges. Which ranges are those? Those ranges are the biography, the painting, and the references. And with standard actions, I'm telling it not to use a background image. So the background image will only be set for the first page and the last page. So there it is. It's a very nice brochure, isn't it? Looks very professional. Yes. And then here I can do everything at once. So now let's select Chagall and generate the brochure. Create a new document and generate the brochure for Chagall. Again, here I'm doing everything in just one in just one go. Now, 
Let's talk more about pictures. I have another example to demonstrate many possibilities that you have with 4D Write Pro and how to insert pictures into your document using 4D Write Pro. Apart from pictures, we also have the standard actions. The standard actions uh, will save you writing a lot of code. You will be impressed how this feature of standard actions is uh, set up, which will open a lot of possibilities. Here I have some videos, but I prefer to uh, do it myself, really. Right, so I'm going to open this third one. So we have this other one where we have a different documents here with different images. So I'm going to delete this one from here. I'm going to insert it again. Uh, so let's insert uh, this happy peel here. I select to select the, an image. You do it with command click. Then you move the image where you want. You know, you see that by default, it inserts the image uh, at the back. But you want to do different things with this image. Uh, so for example, you want to put it not behind the text, but you can put it in front of the text. You see now? Or maybe you put, want to put it in line with the text. You, you, you have all these different options. But what's cool here is that I'm going to put it uh, behind the text here. You see that automatically, if, we, if I don't have anything selected, if I don't have an image selected, you see that all these options get disabled, right? That's thanks to the standard actions. I'll show you the code for that. Uh, well, actually, there is no code. That is what is awesome here. So here, as you can see, there is no, co there is no method for this pop-up. This pop-up has a standard action associated to it, right? And just telling here, anchor layout, it knows automatically what to do, anchor layout, if I assign anchor layout to that object, it will automatically fill the pop-up uh, drop-down list. And if it doesn't, if it's not, if I don't have any picture associated, it will disable it. So I can perfectly delete this one uh, and create it again and I don't have to worry about the code, it just, it just has this associated to it. All right. uh, the code for inserting the picture is this new command, wp add picture. That makes it very, very simple. After you uh, add, insert the picture, 
it will define uh, with the commands of WP set attribute where to put it our different, and you can add more and more properties. Again, the zoom here, it's a standard action. When I'm not selecting uh, the 4D Right Pro area, it gets disabled. Toolbars. So again, toolbars, it's another way of using all the standard actions. They are ready to be used, all these different uh, toolbars. Mm, they have a very modern look and feel, and they are customizable. Uh, all the examples that I'm showing here they are published in the blog. So let's see. Open. This is a document, uh, well, I can write in here, right? And I have this nice toolbar here, where I, can, I have file, oh, sorry. This thing. So again, here I have my document, uh, this document. So I have here, well, my word processor, and I can change the font, the size, can copy, paste, insert, uh, I can insert, for example, uh, how many pages I have, see the page, layout, review. So I have all of these, all, all these options here, but what's incredible is that all of these are done with standard actions. You can see that many of these, they have uh, drop downs, right? Some of them, uh, you have this option here of setting bold or uh, italics underline. And so let's see the standard actions and uh, don't save. And let's have a look at the different forms. So we have here the main one the main form, and this form consists of a subform, which is our toolbar, and a 4D Right Pro area. So let's see the definition of this form. So it has seven pages. And as you can see, for example, the bold one it doesn't have a method, the only thing, but 
it has this standard action, font bold. Italics, you have font italic. And it knows, it knows whether the text is already in bold. So if it is not in bold, it, it, sets, it sets the text to bold. And if it's already in bold, it will uh, put it to plain text, well, without bold. This one as well for the margin, doc slash margin will automatically uh, define the, the margin, uh, where you want to set the margin. And what is impressive about the, uh, the standard actions is that it's aware of the context where they are at that at any time. For example, let's to duplicate this one. Duplicate. So we'll say that I have two for the Ray Pro documents in the same form. So here I have this text in here. I'm going to modify the method here to launch. So here it is. I have this text here, and oh well, in this case they are related to the same one. Uh, but it's aware, and it, it will do it for both, both uh, for two different. Uh, it knows it, it knows where the context is, and it will know where to change a property. So you can have two different uh, for the right pro areas and. Uh, use the same toolbar for both documents. On this example, uh, there are two, uh, say, two styles, two sets of icons uh, for the two different, for the two toolbars. So maybe uh, to compare, well, of course, many of you are already uh, using 4D, right? And you want to make a transition phase between using 4D, right, and passing to 4D, right, pro. I remember that many years ago when people moved from, uh, from Word 2003 to, for, uh, to Word 2007, people was shocked because of the new interface. People didn't know where everything was, right? So uh, we, you can set up a transition strategy using the 4D right uh, legacy layout. And one example that we did for the 4D blog was uh, to recreate 
the old uh, toolbar. So here you have, uh, so the look and feel, it's very, very, very similar. So you can change the font, you can change uh, the style, but again, you have different menus. Uh, that was a, the big change uh, in word processors because they went from using uh, interface with uh, menus with a lot of menus to an, inter an interface with buttons. So again, using standard actions, uh, you can, well, we were able to recreate this one. Uh, you can use this one and, and use it in your uh, databases. Uh, if you want to, to do a transition between the, you, uh, for the right and for the right pro. Right, that's all for me. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, this is more related to, you know, I think, your other presentation. Can you, we change the ruler, the horizontal ruler at the top, make it smaller, for instance? Change? The ruler. The ruler. Oh, hold on. Uh, that one comes as a standard, yeah. Yes. Yes. A couple about tables in these forms. Are you allowed to put photographs or graphics rather into pho into cells? Yes. How about oh graphs? Uh, no, well, images. Images. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, that's what I did on the example of the. Let's see. In this example, here. This part, I'm using a, a table, and on the cells, I'm, I'm inserting uh, the different uh, pictures. Yes, I, I'm using. Perfect. Yes. And is it possible for different rows to have different numbers of cells? Different rows. Row one been? has five cells. Row two has two cells. Uh, no. Yeah. no, no, not at the moment. Okay. Thank you. And the next question would be: Is it possible to insert tables inside tables? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know how Microsoft does it. <laughs> Another question there. Uh, what about exporting or converting this data into other forms, such as, uh, I don't know, PDF or um, a uh, <coughs> layout uh, document or web page? Yes, well, with for the uh, Write Pro, you can export to HTML. Uh, yes, because we are using here a lot of HTML, and it's a uh, one of the first features that we released for uh, for the Write Pro. You have the ability of exporting to uh, classic HTML or exporting to embedded uh, HTML, uh, which it has the advantage of including the pictures inside the HTML instead of having the pictures outside. Uh, this is very useful when you want to send emails, uh, emails with the embedded pictures, right, for newsletter, this is awesome. Uh, so you keep the format, the same format that you have in your, uh, that you have designed in your application. Yes, please. Um, in the keynote, we saw the big document with the summary. We want to know the summary will be generated automatically or uh, no? Uh, no, no, you need to, to add it, you need to create it. One by one. 
You, okay. you, you need to create that summary, yes. Okay, for the Caderite, the old one and the Caderite Pro, we can't import it uh, automatically. Uh, what about the document? Microsoft Word, for example. Uh, Microsoft, no, you need to convert that. You, you can import uh, HTML, you can import uh, for the right Pro documents, and you can import as well for the right the legacy documents. Uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have the ability to import a, a Word documents. And uh, the last question, do you have idea about the language for Arabic, for example, for Caderite Pro? A what, sorry? Language, Arabic, for uh, 4D Pro. Ah, yes, you can use all of the languages that you can use in 4D. No, yes. but in the Write Pro. In Write Pro, yes, As for the Write Pro is fully Unicode you can use in a language. Doesn't work. It doesn't work? No. Well, in that case, uh, <laughs> it's a bug. <laughs> it needs to, to be reported, really. Yeah. It works for Japanese, doesn't it? <laughs> you see, uh... Yes. Can you use the um, word pro um, word processor commands in a f f using process for the tags? Uh, you yes, you should be able to to do it. Mm, since in the end, well, uh, let's think about what is a for the right pro document. A for the right pro document is an object. It's a huge, huge object. Uh, and for me, you can extract uh, the text. Uh, I think those would be two different approaches uh, for the write pro or using process for the tags. You would need two different approaches. For example, what you could do is uh, do, for example, process for the tags first into an HTML and then import that HTML into a for the write pro document. Document. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the purpose is uh, because I assume all these commands, all, uh, I see you do it directly in 4D. But if you want to have the, the code being done outside of a build, like a template, and then you, mm -hmm. you could do it through processing 4D tags. Exactly, yes. For example, if you don't want in the part of the invoice, here on the invoice. Maybe you want that part, the lines, maybe you already have those lines designed in HTML, right? So maybe you might want to do, uh, for, with, with your process for the tags, maybe you want to do a, a for the loop, and then for each line, each line, and then you create your whole HTML uh, table, and then import that one into uh, for the right pro, yes. Yes, Tim, you had a question? Well, the UV engine has this uh, Microsoft Word support. You, you know, the current version, the, the current version uh, you can uh, open a Word, Microsoft Word document yes. and load it in. I have a client that a lot of times that's how they start is somebody will make a Word document, and then it'll say, okay, now put this in the database and make a template so we can do mail merging and things, and, and they're just going to have to stop doing that. They're going to have to have to go directly in here and, uh, and make the, uh, the uh, templates from scratch. Yes, that's a feature that we, yeah. you should, that we should have. It's a, it's, a small, it's a small thing. I yes. think they can live with it, you know. And, and then I also had a feature where they could save these, doc, uh, these uh, 40 write documents to a Word document because mm -hmm. they wanted to have a copy stored on like a file server and they also also have the option to save it as a PDF. So they can say, well, I want to I want to mail merge this out to all these people. Yes. And I want to save a copy of what I sent to them into a particular folder on a file server. And the now the option is they can either save it as a Word document or as a PDF. So that's going to go away. Now the only thing they can do is save it as a PDF. Yes. Right, so that's it. I'm just going to tell them, sorry, the, the integration with Word is gone. No, no, you can save it as PDF. 
Right. But, I'm, but they're going to say, well, I want to save it as a Word document. I'm going to say, well, you can't do that anymore. Oh, well, not. In a, yeah, that's not all. A, not, not at the moment. It would be, but PDF, it works pretty well. I mean, actually, I think it's better to PDF because in PDF, people uh, can't modify it. That's one of the things I told them. It's better to have a PDF because yes. someone could modify a Word yes. document. Anyway, yeah. just wanted to clarify that that's a feature that is not going to be in Write Pro. Word support in or out, mm. it's a goner. I'm not sure if... Uh, it's not if here, is it? I'm, I'm not sure if we are going to implement it, that one. Oh, do, okay. Do you know if we are going to, to do that, Jaco? <laughs> Yes, I, I'm not sure if we are going to add that feature of importing and exporting to Word, all right? But, well, to PDF, it's perfectly possible right now with the command WP print. Yes. Any more questions? Uh, I, I've, I've just got uh, I've got two clients that are big users of, of 4D Write. They have a, a, a we have a table called Letter Templates, and they have hundreds, literally, of these 4D Write documents that they've made to do mail merges of all different kinds for all different purposes. And um, um, I remember when 4D Write Pro was, was first talked about many years ago, as it's being developed. There was a, at one of the summits. There was a, a slide where they said, "Listen, when we make 40 Write Pro, we're going to support all the features in the current 40 Write, so that you can take your existing 40 Write documents and open them in 40 Write Pro, and you're not going to lose nothing to use mm -hmm. bad grammar." And so uh, slowly, that has been occurring as we've yeah. been adding things, background pictures, columns, etc. But I guess. The comment is, that really didn't come true, did it? There's going to be some features of the old 4D Write plugin that are just not going to make it into the Pro version. There may be some edge outlying things. Or yeah. are you going to say, no, 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 no. If you did something in the old plugin and you load it into the Pro, it's still going to be there. Yes, well, it, it's difficult to, yes, we, we, we might have said that right. or it will include all the features. But then uh, we found that maybe it was better to include better features like the one that I've presented, features that are more according to current times. Yeah, it's okay. If, if they lose some things, they were some kind of obscure edge case, because 4D Write the plugin did a lot of yes. really strange things that only Microsoft Word ever considered doing, you know. Uh, and I have clients that, for some reason, found these weird things and have stuck them in to some of their templates. But anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that. I mean, the, the general 90% plus of the 40 write plug-in features appear to now be in Pro. Yeah. There's new things that was never in the old one that are there, which are, are fun. Yeah. But I just want to make sure when we do the conversion and there's all these existing 40 write, you know, documents that are there, that when they go to print one, there's not too many they say, this one's not working anymore, and we got to go in there and f fiddle with it and actually yeah. get it to work again. Yes. So I hope you, you have got the message of this session. The main message of this session is that programming with 4D Write Pro is much easier than programming with 4D Write, thanks to the standard actions and a, few, a smaller set of commands. Uh, you can download all the demos that I did here from the blog. Keep checking the blog because it's really, really useful. Very, uh, they do great things there, the team in France. Thank you very much.